the roof. <laughs> all right already. <laughs> oh. oh, just a job. How's it going out there? Well, I've submitted the chimney pot back on. But the whole stack needs redoing, really. You know, one puff of wind, the whole lot will be in the road. Some of those slates are a bit dodgy, too. Now, you be careful out there. Oh, I'm being careful, very careful. I, I tie myself to the chimney stack with a bit of rope. What, the chimney stack that's about to fall into the road? <coughs> <coughs> oh, my. I never thought of that. My whole life flashed in front of me, then. What you really need are little suction caps all over you. Like that chap in your boy's annual who could walk up walls. Yeah, yes. Suction man. <laughs> How many plungers have we got? One, and it doesn't suck. Oh. <laughs> oh, perhaps not. You know, I hate to admit that I can't do everything in the world, but this job is really too skilled for me. Shall I have a go? Certainly not. I'm not having a bit Tom, Dick and Harry looking up your skirt. <laughs> I'm wearing trousers. Anyway, it's too dangerous. This kind of work you've got to learn properly. Where can you get a crash course in roofmanship? Night school. Tick, VG. Why didn't I think of that? Because I'm brilliant and you're stupid. Yeah, that must be it. It's a good idea, though, you know, in a general sort of way. I've all sorts of things you can learn there. We've got the winter evenings and it's dead cheap. I'll get a syllabus from the library. Good. Mm. I'll do a makeshift job in the meantime on the roof. Right, now, you be careful of that chimney stack. You're all right, Barbara, don't worry. Uh, you never know. One flash of genius, I might not even need evening classes. Oh, Tom, do be careful. But don't keep on nagging. I told you, one thing I have, but it's a perfect sense of balance. lot of subjects at evening classes, can't you? Yeah, I quite fancy the girls keep fit class. Hmm, thought you might. Well, first year Swahili, that sounds interesting. How many one-year-old Swahilis do you know? No, it's not terribly practical, is it? Well, we'll stick with what we've got. We'll go to house maintenance classes on Tuesdays together, mm. and Thursdays I'll go to weaving and you go to pottery. And I bet I learn to weave before you learn to pot. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come. For heaven's sake, get your coats on and come on down to the pub for a drink. What's the matter, Jerry? Thursday evenings, that's what's the matter. It's like being cooped up with a mad moth. Jerry! I am not mad and I am not an insect. Good evening, Tom and Barbara. Simply that Thursday night has always been my music society night. Oh, yes, of course, you got the boot, didn't you? I resigned, Tom. <laughs> Please do not use that expression. I resigned. And naturally, now I'm at a loose end on Thursdays. And everybody has to know it. Jerry! Well, look, we're going to evening classes on Thursdays. Why not come with us? Oh, what sort of evening classes? Oh, all sorts. Bricklaying, kendo, weightlifting. <laughs> I'll talk to Barbara. What sort of classes, Barbara? Well, I'm going to do uh, pottery. Oh, pottery. Join, join. Yeah, that does sound interesting. <laughs> join, join. Oh, do come, Margot. It'll be fun. Oh, I don't know. Oh, go on. It'll be an outlet for all those artistic talents. Yes. You know, I think I will. Good. We can use your car. <laughs> yeah. Here's a thought. Why not make it a foursome? You can come to weaving classes with me. Weaving classes? What could I possibly want to weave? Oh, I don't know. A prayer mat to take into Sir's office with you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's behind all this dabbling in rustic craft? It's not dabbling, mate. These are skills which will serve us in the future. We will either maintain our own house... Replace any crockery might get broken, even make our own clothes. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Tom, I think you're going to have to weave alone. You're jolly right, he will. I think your game's a very good idea, though, Margot. Why? I can have my Thursday evenings back. I can eat a curry, listen to my plebby records, and read a good, dirty book. Do all the things I can't do when you're there. Well, come on, are we going to this pub or not? Providing you're paying? Yes. I'll get our coats. Uh, um, one thing, Barbara. Yes? You do realise that I shall be doing pottery only as a hobby. But of course, I don't think anyone there would mistake you for a common old artisan. Good. <laughs> oh, um... oh, my God, Tom, you're not going out in that. <laughs> Margot, one does presume one is going in the saloon bar, doesn't one? <laughs> Oh, 
Margot, what's the big surprise? Hells. Bells. That's incredible. I bet this set you back a few bob. Jerry, actually. It's my birthday present. But that's not for weeks. Oh, in advance, because I needed it straight away, you see. What are you talking about, Margot? We haven't even been to our first pottery class yet. I don't see that makes any difference. I suppose not. If you're going to put Josiah Wedgwood in his place, the sooner you get the gear, the better. <laughs> not excessive, Tom. No, it's just that I feel that Pottery and I are going to be very good friends. At this price, you better be. Well, I'll say this. There can't be another shed like this in Surbiton. Not shed, Barbara, please. Studio. Sorry. Studio. <laughs> You've got enough clay, Margot. What are you going to make, a 500-gallon vase? No. I thought once I'd mastered the rudiments, I'll specialise in objet. D-art. Da, yes. Of course, it might put Mrs. Weaver's nose just the tiniest bit out of joint. Oh, Margot, she's only been here a week. She's not on your blacklist already, is she? Oh, no, Mrs. Weaver is charming, charming. It's just that she's a painter, and she will steer the conversation onto the subject of art and then play the Queen Bee. And you want to sting her back with your object's D-art? <laughs> I wouldn't have put it as crudely as that, Tom. Would you? No. Oh, come on, Margot, give us a demo. Oh, no. Go on. <laughs> yes, go on. I mean, what's the point of having a new toy? I mean, all this equipment, if you're not going to play with it. I mean, use it. Very well. Only you must realise that I've only had one little experiment. I'm not as yet endowed with any sort of technique. Thank you, Tom. Right. You're going to scrub up first. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to show you or not? Sorry. Very well. First of all, one sits at one's wheel. Yes, with you so far. <laughs> then one takes one's ball of not too soggy, but not too flabby clay. It sounds like a cookery lesson. Barbara. Barbara. Sorry. Now, if you look at my foot, you will see that it is placed on the treadle pedal. Ye yes! <laughs> One begins to treadle. Or is it pedal? Anyway, one does it. <laughs> See? And now for the moment of truth. One throws one's pot. Where? <laughs> Onto the very epicenter of one's wheel. <laughs> Go on, then. You will forgive any little mistake one might make. Well, you're the one who's peddling. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rough idea, anyway. You couldn't get much rougher. <laughs> you were willing me to fail, weren't you? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind, Margaret. He's just jealous. It's only because he's doing rotten old weaving. <laughs> Are you still going to give us a lift to the evening institute tonight, Margot? I'd certainly give Barbara a lift. Oh. You wouldn't make old Tom run behind the car, would you? Not old Tom. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be silly, don't. <laughs> I'll um, pick you both up at seven. Margot, you are the Doltoness Royal of the Pottery World. <laughs> See you later, then. Bye. See you at seven. See you then. Bye. Bye.